good morning uh, this is ramesh reddy working as associate professor in the department of uh, ece st martin's engineering college so today uh, i want to discuss about sampling theorem right okay so before we get into the sampling theorem what is sampling theorem why it is required in what context it will be required for us so that we should know right so sampling theorem is will be useful in converting analog signal into digital signal right so here most of the signals like real world signals which are of analog in nature right so for transmitting those signals we have to use the analog communication system right so as per the developments uh, and improvements in digital technology digital transmission systems right so we have many advantages compared to analog transmission or analog communication to digital communication right so the problem here it is in order to gain the, the advantages in digital communication we require right so the digital signal to be uh, uh, applied as an input to digital communication system right so therefore if we are able to convert uh, the available continuous time signal into digital signal we can gain the advantages of digital transmission systems okay so therefore sampling will help in converting continuous time signal into discrete time signal and later on the discrete time signal will be quantized and encoded uh, to go from the digital signal so therefore the first and foremost step which we are required to perform hmm, in converting analog signal analog signal into digital is the first step we have to perform sampling the signal right so then we can perform quantization and later on encoding encoding the signal will give will give the digital signal as the output right so here the sampling theorem plays the major role in converting continuous time signal into discrete time signal okay so let us see like what is sampling theorem right so sampling theorem uh, statement can be given as any continuous time band limited signal or a band limited signal of finite energy which has no frequency components higher than fm can be uh, represented in samples by taking the sampling time interval as ts less than r equal to 1 by 2 fm so this is during from conversion from continuous time signal into discrete time signal right and uh, sampling uh, that's only the first part of the sampling theorem second part of the sampling theorem is converting discrete time signal into continuous time signal okay so discrete to to continuous again so that is called reconstruction second part of the sampling theorem okay right so we are talking about band limited signal so we are applying applying the sampling theorem for band limited signals means the signal uh, which is having higher cut off frequency as fm that means the maximum frequency of the signal is fm okay right so that's what in the statement itself we explain as okay so a country you know, band limited signal of finite energy so it should be a finite uh, it should have finite energy and maximum frequency fm that means that there is no signal component after fm okay right 
So that means it is limited. The uh, frequency range of that signal is limited to FM. Okay. So that can be converted into samples. That means representing continuous time signal into discrete version. That is a discrete time signal, right? By taking the sampling time interval, T, Ts is less than or equal to 1 by 2 FM. It is a condition specified in the sampling theorem. Now, in the second part, converting discrete to continuous. So, what is the condition? The condition here we are going to uh, take as Fs greater than or equal to 2 FM. So, where Fs is the sampling rate and the FM is the maximum frequency and the previous case Ts as a sampling time interval okay right so this is how overall we can express the sampling theorem statement as a, a band limited signal of finite energy which has no frequency components higher than fm can be completely represented by its samples and can be recovered back to original signal by taking the sampling rate as fs greater than or equal to 2 fm right so this is the uh, statement of sampling theorem now so generally how we can perform sampling so in fact uh, this you know, from the statement we can uh, know that for every ts seconds for every ts seconds you are going to represent a sample right so that means in the given continuous time signal you are you are going to represent for every ts seconds you are going to represent the signal right so instead of representing the continu uh, continuously we are taking the samples right okay so how we can practically perform this so practically we can perform by taking a product or a, a multiplier we can take multiplier for which the inputs are like the given signal x of t continuous time signal or which is uh, no, a band limited signal and a sampling signal will be used another input so that is in fact uh, impulse signals impulse train that means a train of impulses a sequence of impulses okay so that will give us the sampled signal excess of t okay right so that means given signal is multiplied with a train of impulses okay so which will give you the sample version of the signal which is representing for every ts seconds so this signal we call it as a sampling signal sampling signal and we can represent that as del of t minus n t s that means it is a, a train of impulses okay so for every t s seconds you are representing an impulse so graphically how we can uh, uh, represent so when you are multiplying given signal with a train of impulses you are going to get the sampled version of the signal okay so that means Sampled signal x s of t is equal to x of t multiplied with a, a train of impulses that we can take like summation n is equal to let's say uh, 0 to infinite del of t minus n t s. Okay, right. So this is mathematically how we find out the sampling. So what are we doing given signal a continuous time signal is multiplied with a, a train of impulse signals right so we have the property of impulse signal as so whenever a signal is multiplied x of t is multiplied with del of t so what is the value right so we have that property from the impulse as any signal multiplied with del of t okay so here we know x of t multiplied with del of t that del of t will exist only at t is equal to 0 so del of t is equal to 1 when t is equal to 0 only 
and rest of all the time its value is zero. So that's why, so we are going to get, so it's like x of zero into del of zero, anyhow it is one. So therefore, you are able to represent the given signal, you are able to represent the given signal at t is equal to zero if you are multiplying the given signal with a del of t. Similarly, if you take x of t multiplied with a, let's say del of t minus 1, right? If it is multiplied with del of t minus 1. So what will you observe? Here when you are multiplied del of x of t with del, del of t, you got x of 0. So here del of t minus 1 will exist at t is equal to 1. That means when the argument is 0, its value is 1. That's what from the definition of impulse. So therefore, so this you are going to get as x of 1, right? So why only impulse signal or a train of impulse signal is used as a sampling signal is the reason for this, okay? So given signal is multiplied with a del of t, you're getting x of 0. If you want a x of t signal to be represented at, let's say t is equal to 10. So then what do you have to do? So we have to multiply the given signal with del of t minus 10, okay? So then you'll get x of 10 like that. So wherever you want to represent the sample, right? So that uh, instant, we are going to take an impulse and uh, we'll multiply the given signal. So that's where we are taking a train of impulses, a sequence of impulses as a sampling. Signal. So this is actually the for fundamental uh, which is going to be used in the sampling. Okay, right? Now, if you see graphically, so graphically, if you see, so let us say x of t is a sine wave, for example, and a train of impulses, the sampling signal we are using. So let's say this is x of t and t. So here you are using impulses, a train of impulses you are using in order to convert the continuous time signal into discrete, right? And of course, the spacing between the successive some uh, impulses will be Ts seconds, like this is Ts, 2Ts, 3Ts, and so on, okay? So this is del of t minus n ts. For every ts seconds, you are uh, representing an impulse, right? And after that, so we are going to observe the sampled signal as. So wherever ts is there, corresponding amplitude of the signal will be represented, right? So that means at zero, now at ts seconds, Okay, so exactly if you see here, so like this, you will be observing the amplitudes of the signal, right? So that means continuous time signal now being represented in discrete form, okay? So with the help of this impulse, train of impulses, graphically we can observe like this, okay, right? Now, so how about the sampled spectrum? That means in frequency domain, we have observed this graphical representation mathematical in the, uh, in the form of like in mathematical form in time domain okay so so let us represent like sampled signal x of xs of t is equal to now you are multiplying x of t with a, a train of impulses right so summation n is equal to 0 to infinite uh, del of t minus n ts this is what we will take right now let us uh, represent this del of 
T minus N T S. Okay, right. So is equal to in exponential uh, Fourier series. That is summation N is equal to let's say minus infinite plus infinite. So C N into E power J N omega S T. Okay, so where C n is equal to 1 by t integral minus t to t by 2 to plus t by 2. So it is x of t. So x of for us is it is del of t. Right. So del of t into e power minus j n omega s t d. Okay. Right. So since del of t is existing only at t is equal to 0, right? So what are we going to get? So when you substitute t is equal to 0, del of 0 is 1. e power, anyhow t is 0, e power 0, it is 1. So integral of 1, t. So overall, you are going to get as, so cn is 1. OK, right? So it's, it's like uh, representing a train of impulses, okay? So CN value you are going to get one because of the impulse signal existing only at T is equal to zero, right? Now, once after being represented, now you're going to substitute this value here. That means sample signal excess of T is equal to, so it is like, x of t or summation you can take n is equal to minus infinite to plus infinite x of t multiplied with you know e power minus j n omega s t right so x of t multiplied with exponential term okay right now when you apply fourier transform for this when you apply Fourier transform for this, you are going to get excess sample signal excess of omega is equal to on the right hand side, you are going to get as so you're going to get x of omega plus x of omega plus r minus omega s plus x x of omega plus r minus 2 omega s. Okay. So and so on. So you're going to get infinitely. Uh, that means uh, x of omega repeating for every omega s thirds, right? So the sample spectrum will contain like x of omega, right? Repeating for every omega s. So something like this, if there is a gap in between. So like this you are going to observe. In fact, okay, so omega s to omega s and the minus, negative side minus omega s and so on. So sample spectrum contains that Fourier transform of given signal x of t, right, repeating for every omega s. So this is how frequency spectrum of sample spec, uh, signal will have. And in the reconstruction, what we are going to do, we are going to extract x of omega from that by using a band pass filter or a low pass filter, right? So whose cutoff frequency is equal to 0 to omega, right? So this is how we are going to reconstruct the signal, okay? Thank you.